passenger. But tonight, sources reveal blood found in unusual spots in the groom's stateroom. Is there a break in the mystery surrounding the missing groom, 26-year-old George Smith? Smith vanished off a honeymoon cruise in the Mediterranean. Was there blood not only on the side of the ship, the brilliance of the seas, but under the sheets of the groom's bed? Have police zoomed in questioning on one man? As you know, my brother, George Smith, went missing on July 5th from the Royal Caribbean Brilliance of the Seas. Uh, we believe he was murdered on his honeymoon. We just thought it can't happen. We, we, we just thought he's somewhere else on the ship. The Turkish police came on board. They conducted a, a full forensic investigation. They took fingerprints. They took samples from, from the cabin. They took photographs and, and collected that evidence. Straight out to investigative reporter Pat Lalama. Pat, what's going on? Oh boy, there's a lot of new information that I think is really interesting. One being that, as you say, they are beginning to hone in, and I said all along this is where they should have gone, but, you know, armchair quarterback. The people who were hanging out with him that night, one in particular, a man referred to as a strapping Russian-American who lives in the Bronx. Remember, he and I believe two younger brothers and another teenager were allegedly with George that night in the room. Now, count to three days forward, these same guys are alleged to have sexually assaulted a young woman and put it on videotape, and that's how they finally got their behinds thrown off the ship. That's where cops are going. Secondly and significantly is the implication that there may be, uh, have been blood found under the bedspread, which explain, will explain why the security staff didn't see it when they brought uh, Mrs. Smith to bed and why she didn't see it when she got up in the morning and went on the way to the spa. Here's what a passenger on the ship had to say. I'm worried definitely that there was some kind of serious foul play. Unless you were playing king of the world, you know, it's just not possible to fall over. And I just, there was so much blood and the distance from his balcony to that deck was not that great, uh, you know, to generate that kind of injury. So, you know, I'm worried that something terrible happened to him and he was pushed overboard. That's what I'm worried happened. I want to go to Lanny Davis. Lanny is with us. He is the legal counsel for Royal Caribbean. Welcome, Lanny. Hi, Lanny, Nancy. what can you tell us about the blood found in the cabin? Was there blood on the groom's bed? Well, the FBI has asked us not to comment on that forensic evidence that was uh, taken by the Turkish authorities and turned over to the FBI. But I think with all the published reports, what I'm able to say to you is that there certainly uh, has been confirmation that blood was found in the room in small amounts and was turned over to the FBI uh, after forensic examination. Lanny, Lanny. But that's about all I'm allowed to say. Lanny, about I've got a surprise for you. We reported blood in the cabin right okay. here on the airways. I'm, I'm not going to deny your report on that, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I don't want Lanny Davis on, on the Nancy Gray Show taking us to court. Well, well, Lanny, what can you tell me? I asked another one of the counsels for Royal Caribbean, and right. it was like pulling a tooth out of her. I'm a JD, not a DDS. I don't know how to pull teeth. <laughs> I finally got uh, that there were video cameras in the halls. Now yeah. I understand over 90 videotapes were handed over Correct. to the FBI. Are there cameras train down the corridor of George Smith's Hall. Yeah, there are cameras uh, uh, trained all over the ship, but we're not sure uh, because we haven't viewed those videotapes that they were in that particular hallway. But I can certainly confirm to you that I believe approximately 94 videotapes were turned over somewhere in the 90s to the FBI who are viewing them to see whether they can track the movements of these young men who were um, seen with this George Smith taking Lanny, him down the hall to his room. This happened on July 5. How long do they need to review the videos and how long until we get the results back on the DNA of the blood. Can you confirm tonight the blood on Smith's bed and from what I understand on tissue and towels in the bathroom of his stateroom are Smith? 
Uh, again, I've, I've seen the same reports about uh, a smidgen of blood on the on the bedspread and uh, tissue and towel in the bathroom. You're right, that's already been reported. Uh, I don't know what the status of the FBI investigation is. We are working with them. We did send photographs of well, the cabin. Well, don't you cabin. think you should find out if it is his blood? Well, I mean, wouldn't we, you want to know that as the Royal Caribbean Council? Absolutely, but the FBI is conducting an investigation. The FBI doesn't share that information. The grand jury has been impaneled, and you know that it's very hard to get either the FBI or the U.S. attorney to share information with anybody, much less true, attorneys true, for the cruise ship. True, true. Even as a prosecutor, it's hard to get the feds to right. cooperate with you on anything. Um, question, Lanny. There were some photos released of George Smith's cabin, right. and one of them looked like a messy room. The next one looked like a messier room. Right. Now, it's my understanding that Royal Caribbean took somebody, a security guard, took these photos and handed them over under the agreement they would not be disseminated. And people, I, I, you, it's not a close-up of the bed. It's not a close-up of the bathroom. You, you see a messy room and then a messier room with clothes in the floor and then the next picture, more clothes in the floor. Well, I didn't see any forensic value, but it leads me to ask you, how were these photos leaked? Didn't Royal Caribbean hand them over under the understanding, the agreement, that they would not be disseminated so as not to jeopardize this case? Uh, yes, first of all, thanks for asking the question and let's just talk the facts here. Uh, we took photographs at 9.30 in the morning before the Turkish police arrived, so we had a record of the way the room looked before yeah. they went into their forensic investigation where Smart. they'd be uh, taking things out and moving things around. Secondly, our guest relations manager went back into the room to pack up Jennifer's clothes, Mrs. Hagel Smith's clothes, and open the safe with her combination, with her uh, permission to pack up her clothes. And thirdly, an FBI agent came on the ship three days later. And after that, we took photographs to look at the difference between the first set and the second set. Now, we sent these photographs at the request of the two attorneys for the Smith family, precisely because we wanted to share with them everything we knew. The irony is they've been criticizing us for not doing that. The only reason we were allowed to do it is the FBI said to us, you must get their absolute commitment. They will keep these photographs confidential because if we're investigating anything that happened in the room, we don't want the individual we're investigating to get a head start on concocting stories if they happen to see something in You're those photographs. Absolutely. So correct. here's what happened. The, well, wait, the wait, 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 right. Lanny, I want to interpret what you just said so brilliantly. All right, here's the deal. When a defendant doesn't know what the state's evidence is yet, correct. They're they're in the dark, okay? They're stabbing in the dark. Once they see the state's photos, once they find out what the evidence is, they can then tailor their story to match up with, for instance, these photos. That's correct, and Nancy, and you have it right, and you are an attorney that understands that. But the two attorneys that we wrote the letter to, to give them these photographs because the family has been criticizing us and was criticizing okay. us, and what do they do? They leak it to a television station. The FBI last night, I can tell you, because we talked to them, is furious that these attorneys broke the agreement and has uh, injured the FBI investigation, and yet they still criticize Royal Caribbean okay. right. Wait for not uh, doing a good I get it. I get it. Smith's lawyers leaked it. That's what I was trying to find out. Correct. Got a tough question for you, Lanny Davis. The counsel for Royal Caribbean told me that the cabin, George Smith's cabin, was kept intact. No one tampered with it. Even after Turkish authorities said you can release it, they kept it sealed for a period of time, correct? Correct. All right, then, is it true what Jennifer Hagel says? She says that day, the day her husband goes missing, in that 24-hour period, someone from Royal Caribbean went back in the room, went through everything in the room, took everything they believe was Jennifer Hagel's, put it in a bag, and gave it back to her. Wouldn't you call that tampering with a crime scene? Um, certainly, she asked us to get her belongings because she wanted to go home. Uh, the lady who did this, Marie Rehert, who is our guest relations manager, was very careful and she's been interviewed on television and explained all she did was pack the clothes. Okay. She didn't touch anything else. She tried to be careful. You're absolutely right. Okay, that's she kind of a boo-boo. That's kind of a boo-boo, but I don't know if it's going to amount to anything forensically by her going in and getting Jennifer Hagel's clothes. 
But how do you know? What I'm, what I'm saying, Lisa Wang, you're a veteran defense attorney. You and I have both handled cases that involve blood. Blood, Lisa. And what I would like to see is the blood on the bed, the blood on the Kleenex, the blood on the tissue. Why? If it's a blood spatter, that means there could be a beating or there could be a shooting. If it is a blood drop, that means that George Smith was killed over the object and blood dropped down. If it was a smear, it could mean something altogether differently, Lisa Wayne. If it was on the bedspread, the bottom of the bedspread where your foot is, on the pillow, under the pillow, every fiber of this blood on the sheet has to be examined and photographed because forensically it is vital. You're totally correct, and I think what's hard is that this woman, Marie, may have had very good intentions. She didn't know, and frankly, someone should have been directing her. That crime scene should have been sealed off immediately because now you have interference of if, what, if things were transferred, if mm -hmm. blood was transferred, fibers were transferred, and that may compromise the scene. Um, and it, she didn't know, but someone should have been directing her correctly. Well, and the, and the other thing, uh, to uh, Michelle Suscower, Michelle, along the same vein, everybody, Michelle Suscower, our Florida attorney, Michelle, uh, and this is not to impugn anything on Jennifer Hagel or her belongings, but if there were blood spatters in that room, what if there were blood spatters from a high impact like a shooting or a beating on some of her belongings? She would never notice it. You've got to look at it forensically. Absolutely. This crime scene was absolutely corrupted and the integrity of the evidence is at issue here. the boat had been uh, searched you know we said well make sure that the waters are being searched and I pushed and pushed and pushed for the extension of the search you know by the Turkish and, and the Greek Coast Guard and they did do that for us we did everything we could because George was so strong and so muscular we thought that he could swim if you know he was okay when he went in the water but unfortunately I don't think he was okay when he went on the overhang Undeniably you. LensCrafters Unconditional Happiness Guarantee gives you up to 30 days to decide. Wear them. Change them. Love them. Or your money back. LensCrafters. You'll see. We're better. You're looking at one of the thinnest, most written about new devices for business. Introducing the ultra-thin, fully-loaded Motorola Q, the world's slimmest smartphone, exclusively from the nation's largest high-speed wireless broadband network, Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Does your pet have difficulty climbing up to his favorite spot? Now you can give him a leg up with Doggy Steps, the little stairs that lets him go up and down with ease. Just the right height to step up to couches and beds. The right size for even the smallest of legs. Doggy Steps are lightweight and portable, so you can use them anywhere. And no more bending over to help your pet up, so there's less stress on your back, too. The bed is quite high, so we're all up here, and Sammy's left on the floor. And with the Doggy Steps, it's great. He just climbs right up. And I don't want him to be jumping on and off the bed because then he'll aggravate the injury. So it's nice to be able to have him to go up and down the doggy steps. Can't get him in the car? Doggy Steps makes it easy for your pet to climb right in. And it's a real lifesaver for pets with hip and back problems, too. And the only way that he would be able to get up on the couch is if we would pick him up. So now with the doggy steps, he can just join us whenever he wants. He can jump pretty well with our short legs, but he can't quite make that bed. So having some steps there to help him along, it's a great thing. Doggy steps are great for small breeds, older dogs, dogs with arthritis or back problems, even overweight dogs. Doggy steps gives your pet freedom from the floor and more companionship than ever before. Other pet steps sell for up to $100. But through this exclusive television offer, you can get the original doggy steps for only $59.99. Call now and we'll take $20 off. That's just $39.99. But call right now and we'll double this offer and give you an extra 
extra set of doggy steps for free. Just pay separate shipping and handling. That's one for the couch or bed and one for the car. This two-for-one offer is not available in stores. So call now and get two sets of the original doggy steps, a $120 value for only $39.99. But you got to call now. Call 1-800-681-4328 to order doggy steps for just $39.99. Have your credit card ready when you call 1-800-681-4328. Call now about 7 30 and I stepped out on the balcony and it was just too apparent to miss right below my balcony and there was a very large blood stain there very very dark in the middle it's physically impossible for someone to go over that railing without some assistance on my uh, balcony they actually came up to chest height and there is no way that you can fall over particularly if you're drunk, because the first thing that gives when you're drunk are your legs. You'd have to be an Olympic high jumper to jump over that fence yet. George, that railing on the balcony, but George Smith's blood was found on the other side. Now, tonight, we were learning his blood found in unusual places within his own cabin, on the bed, on tissues and towels, in the bathroom. We don't really know enough, though, Pat Lalama, because what's in the bathroom could be on, on a tissue from shaving, a shaving accident, or could it be blood from wiping up blood? It could be anything, Pat. Well, of course, and especially if the crime scene's been corrupted to some degree, but okay, I guess the Johnny best Cochran, we can that's enough though, out Nancy. of you. That's enough out of you, Johnny Cochran, about contamination. If Don't this lady, there, God rest. If they, <laughs> God rest. No, no, wait, this lady, wait, 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 though, Nancy. Wait, wait. Let me just say though, what if we find some DNA from one of the four? That's what we can only hope for. Is you know, DNA I got another from question. The other people. I got another question regarding this Russian American young man. He was there. Mm -hmm. I understand with his family, but that's not who he was boozing it up with and uh, getting boisterous and raucous there in the casino with George Smith. He was with two other guys, and what I don't understand, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Pat LaLama, they say that he, they put on video, and I'm putting it in quotes, sex with a young woman. Now, they also say Turkish official, officials say that sex was consensual. Somebody here on the set, anybody on the panel tonight want to tell me that this woman agreed, consented to sex with three guys she just met on video? I think the Turkish authorities were way off, Pat. Now he's being questioned in a murder, Pat. Well, listen, I mean, it's already been reported that there are sexual assault allegations. So what they want to say is one side of the story, but how that young woman sees it might be something completely different. There's a, f a videotape, for Lord's sake. But what I don't get is why did it take three wondered, days to connect the... We always Go wondered ahead, what people do on cruises for weeks on end. Lanny Davis, a woman being assaulted... First of all, thank on the you. ship with a video and then the Italian authorities, I thought it was Turkish, it's Italian, I'm sure, say, oh, no, 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 that wasn't a crime. Bye-bye. First of all, I've got to put a few facts out. Thank you for letting me respond after hearing so many things that need correction. The crime scene wasn't corrupted because we don't know whether it was a crime scene. And the whoa, Turkish... Whoa, let wait, me, wait, no, don't, let no, me finish, no, Nancy. You're perpetrating. Let me finish. You're perpetrating. This man is missing. Let me, there's a ton of blood found there. You're, you're saying there's not a crime? You're not giving me a chance to okay. speak without talking over okay, me, and that's okay. not fair. I, it may be a crime scene. What I'm saying is that the room was sealed. The Turkish investigators came in to took the forensic evidence, including what you're reporting as samples of blood that could have come from the gentleman, Mr. Smith, could have come from Mrs. Smith, could have come from the young men. We don't know that. They took the forensic evidence, turned it over to the FBI. The FBI boarded the ship two days later, went into the room and praised the forensic investigation. That was done. And in terms of an assertion on national television that the crime scene was corrupted, well, when, you're the, indi the, one that when told the individual me does in. not know, the only thing that that happened was Marie Somebody at, the went request, in and removed items. at the request of Jennifer removed the clothes after that doesn't make it after, okay, after the Turkish doesn't authorities make it okay? after the Turkish authorities 
Let me ask you something. Release the room after they finish their forensic investigation. Let me ask you something. I appreciate the sermon. It's beautiful. But answer this, Lanny. I gave you facts, Lanny. not sermon. Let me ask you a question. You're saying, number one, there may not be a crime. That's BS, number one. Number two... Well, how do you know it's BS? You know what? I would bet you everything in my pathetic little savings account. You can bet, account. but that's speculation. You don't know. And so yeah, rather you know than what? speculating... I agree. Let the FBI finish its investigation rather than you're speculating. I am very suspicious along with you, Nancy, but I think we both agree that we're speculating and only the FBI has the forensic evidence Lanny, and we ought to let them Lanny, do their investigation. Lanny, the guy's dead, all right? I don't want to hear any argument from you about whether there's been a crime. In fact, you're losing a lot of credibility by suggesting everything's A-OK. -okay. And another thing, I don't know if you've ever prosecuted violent crimes, but even if someone gave you permission to go into a crime scene and remove items from a crime scene, that is contamination. Well, maybe you and I don't care maybe who you in the family. I, I was speaking. The, the family doesn't have the ability to allow, to consent to have items removed from a scene. And isn't it true that after these items were removed, packed up, and gone, it was after that that you found, Royal Caribbean found, blood on the bed? Yes, no? No. And the Turkish authorities were there before, and they released the room after they completed three hours of forensic gathering of the evidence you're describing. And you and I do not disagree. We're both speculating. We're waiting for the evidence to come in, and you're not. There is a way to recapture the world's imagination. The 2007 Saturn Sky Roadster, nicely equipped at 24635. Saturn, like always, like never before. Access in VIP treatment at the House of Blues from Visa Signature, the rewards card that rewards you for living. Kids are just better with technology than their parents. Like, by the time I graduate from college, we'll be building clean coal power plants that are pollution free, and that includes greenhouse gases. Go here, they'll explain it. Eight million American men have diabetes, 29 million have high blood pressure. 50 million have high cholesterol. Many men with these medical conditions have one thing in common. Their love life just isn't what it used to be. If this sounds like you, call 1-800-980-1952 or go to mensfacts.com for your free Men's Facts kit. You'll get a booklet about how diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol may lead to a medical condition that could affect your love life. Plus, you'll get tips to help you talk to your doctor and learn about a medicine that can help. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, your love life could be affected. So get the facts. Call 1-800-980-1952 or visit mensfacts.com. You'll be glad you did. Call 1-800-980-1952 or visit mensfacts.com today. America's favorite home gym is more affordable than ever. Now you can get the all-new Bowflex Extreme for just $19 a month. Call the number on your screen for a free DVD or video and check it out. Bowflex's power rod technology delivers results. Powerful arms, defined legs, a stronger chest, and a toned, sexy core. And owning a Bowflex home gym is so affordable. Great results are easy with a new Extreme. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week, to get in the best shape of your life. The Extreme is built so well that we back it with an unrivaled seven-year warranty. And so effective, it comes with Bowflex's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Own the Extreme with no money down and payments of just $19 a month. And when you call right now, we'll give you the leg attachment upgrade free. Call for a free DVD or order your Bowflex Extreme for only $19 a month. And for a limited time, get the leg attachment free. Just went into shit with disbelief. We just thought it can't happen. We, we, we just thought he's somewhere else on the ship. We just thought, you know, maybe he's in, you know, in a deck chair somewhere. We just, disbelief, it was just disbelief. 
world-renowned forensic expert Henry Lee back on Brilliance of the Seas trying to find clues to the mystery of missing groom George Smith. And here is what Lee had to say. I did find uh, something, okay, but I cannot tell you what we found. We did find something. All right. Uh, he's playing a cat and mouse game with me, uh, Joe Lawless. But the, re the reason is, uh, when you, you think you found some evidence, I've been to many, many crime scenes, as have you and all the other liars on the show tonight. Just because you find something, you've got to have it tested in a lab. For instance, if he, if he found a speck of blood, he's got to take it, photograph it, remove it, take it back, make sure it matches back up to George Smith or possibly a suspect. I mean, it could be anything. But I want to talk to you quickly about how important it is to go in and take measurements inside the cabin for a future video reenactment in front of a jury. Explain Joe Lawless. Well, you absolutely need, need that, Nancy, because when you, you, you bring, bring a case like this, uh, into a courtroom, you don't have the crime scene. The, the boat's going to be however many thousand miles away, and you need to be able to either reconstruct a model, a floor plan, or something so that the jury can get a feel for what that cabin is like. For example, in a very closed-in area, uh, it might be that you want to reconstruct almost a life-size model so that the jury right. could see that if there was a fight, uh, if there was some kind of violence, there would have been trace evidence left, which in this instance is going to be hard to find because Royal Caribbean controlled the crime scene scene and allowed it to be contaminated exactly. very early on. Uh, I mean, you and I have, have been in numerous crime scenes. How often do you see where someone who might have a peripheral influence on that crime scene or who might be sued down the road are able to restrict access of people who are gathering evidence? And that's what it appears to be going on here. He's absolutely correct. Ann Bremner joining us out of Seattle, high profile lawyer. And uh, I recall reenacting a case for the jury. It was thought to be a suicide and mm -hmm. when I was at the crime lab we put up the lady's sheets all right she was killed in her bed and we got to looking and saw underneath her pillow were splatter marks now we had to right. reenact for the jury that this was physically impossible for splatter from a head wound to get up under the pillow in the form of spatter marks Right. So the reenactment can be very, very important. That's why Lee needed these measurements. But what about the chain of custody? Explain Ann Bremner. Well, that, and that's a problem with this case. Of the, the, the saying's been what happens on a cruise ship stays on a cruise ship because there's been such problems with these scenes. But that's exactly right, Nancy. When chain of custody, it's got to be in the same condition as when you took it from the scene, as when it's shown to a jury, uninterrupted. And when the testing occurs, it can't be tainted in any way, whether it comes from Dr. Lee or whether it comes from the authorities themselves. guy with his inappropriate questions you trust your husband no constant opinions and smart comebacks move on people nothing to see here maybe you wanted to strangle him maybe you married him glenn beck is that guy on headline news 5 tomorrow night at 7 and 9 the mysterious disappearance and sightings of olivia newton john's longtime boyfriend is patrick mcdermott alive and well in mexico nancy grace headline prime tomorrow 8 eastern what scares stephen king not waking up to the show he calls Good Company. Robin and Company, Monday morning, 6 to 10 on Headline News. An AC360 exclusive, Angelina Jolie. Her first in-depth TV interview since Shiloh's birth. AC360, CNN Tuesday night, 10 Eastern. When traditional investigation fails... I think we've got something. Three paranormal experts bring crime solving... Oh my God, did you hear that? ...to another dimension, haunting evidence. Wednesdays at 10.30, only on Court TV. Keep watching Nancy Grace. She's right here inside.
inside Headline Prime. Everywhere you look, you'll find more reasons to get the Optimum Double Play, a special offer for our cable TV customers. Optimum Online and Optimum Voice, two great services, each just $29.95 a month for a year when you get both together. For just $29.95 a month, you can get the best home internet access with Optimum Online. It's faster, easier, and more reliable than DSL and dial-up. And for the smartest phone service around, there's Optimum Voice. For just $29.95 a month, you get unlimited flat rate calling anywhere in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. Plus 13 free calling features. The Optimum Double Play. One call, one bill, one simple connection. And you've got two great Optimum services for less than you've probably spent today on your phone service alone. Optimum Online and Optimum Voice. Each just $29.95 a month. Total savings, $240. For the best deal in town, it's Optimum or it's not. Call 1-866-GET-BOTH. Welcome tonight. A special night for us here at Nancy Grace. Not only is Dr. Henry Lee with us, the world renowned expert, but also the family of 26 year old George Smith. Uh, here in the studio with me, George's family, but first to investigative reporter Jane Velez Mitchell. Jane, bring us up to date, friend. Well, Nancy, there is a sense that if anyone, if anyone can solve this mystery, it is Dr. Henry Lee. As you mentioned, he is a very well-respected forensic scientist. He has worked on some of the biggest cases out there, including the O.J. Simpson case, and he will bring his many decades of experience to bear trying to reconstruct the crime scene, trying to use the evidence that's been gathered so far, the photographs, the witness statements, and key data like the weight of George Smith to put it all together and crack this case and Let's hope for the sake of the families so that he does crack this case. To forensic scientist and colleague, Dr. Henry Lee, sir, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Henry, who asked you to work on the case? Uh, Nancy, uh, Jennifer Smith uh, herself and uh, her lawyer, uh, Jim Walker, asked me to assist. Here in the studio with me again, George Smith's family, to his sister, Bree Smith, you have been on the forefront, you and your mother and father, looking for justice, looking for answers. You're not shying away from this no. at all. No. Which is very brave. A lot of crime victims, and I, and I speak on their behalf as a crime victim, want to curl up in a ball and try not to think about it. What about going on that cruise ship would be too painful for you? Um, the thought of having to look for my brother's blood. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not able to look at, at the crime scene photos as my mother is not able to, and the thought of having to go on the ship to, to look for blood is, is far too difficult for us. You know what? I, as a crime victim, have never returned to the scene of the crime. I just... Right. And it's been many, many years. It right. just would be tortuous for me. Yes. It would be tortuous. Yes. Um, Ma'am, Maureen Smith, why are you here tonight? We're here tonight because we want justice for Bree's brother and our son. And we're go just going to keep on coming and coming and coming. We're not going to go away until we find answers to what happened to my son on that ship on that night. Something very bad happened to him and we're just going to keep coming out here till we can get answers. Sophia Choi at the CNN Center, and here are some of the big stories we're following. A Utah man who admitted to killing his wife and dumping her body in the trash has voluntarily agreed to stop selling autographs and other memorabilia related to his conviction. Prison officials say Mark Hacking, who is serving a six years to life sentence for the 2004 murder of his wife, signed various items that were auctioned on the internet. The U.S. military says it is using every means available to search for two soldiers who went missing Friday night after an insurgent attack south of Baghdad. And nearly five years after 9-11, rescue workers who got ill at Ground Zero have been rallying in New York on Saturday, urging the government to help tend to their health needs. I'm Sophia Choi from the CNN Headline Newsroom. Hey. Hey. Maybe you can give me a call sometime? Yeah, I would love that. Show me the downward-facing dog. I'm, I'm sorry, what? You know, all you guys know how to do yoga. You guys. 
Look, not all Jetta owners know yoga. I'm... And you got the foot in the mouth position, right? Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 115% more likely to enjoy yoga, but don't assume they all do. Lose your ignorance at thejettareport.com. I was just getting to the good part when Uncle Ernie dropped his tongs. Oh, I'd seen that look before. It was heartburn. Before you could say duck sauce, I was there with my Pepsi Complete. I told him only Pepsi Complete starts to neutralize acid on contact and keeps heartburn from coming back all day or all night. In no time, Uncle Ernie was in Mooshu heaven, and I had my eye on the spicy dumpling. Pepsi Complete, just one and heartburn's done. Some people think leadership on the basketball court is just about winning. Some people think that leadership in business is just about making a lot of money. Learn how leading ethically is the mark of a true champion. Attend the 2006 Fuqua School of Business and Coach K Leadership Conference at Duke University. You'll learn how to seek and sustain a competitive leadership edge. Whether you're in business or in sports or in life. We already work at five nights a week, but you think Lady Justice takes off weekends? No way! We work the justice system now on weekends. Me and you, Saturday and Sunday night. Nancy Grace, seven nights a week, eight and ten Eastern, only on Headline News Prime. TD Ameritrade's Apex traders are among the best in the business, but they aren't always who you might expect. Most people stay with the obvious, like a stock that's in the news. I focus on a specific sector, I explore it, I know it. To me, that's what trading's all about. I have quality research, great tools, technology that keeps me on top of things. So when I see something I like, I can jump on it. The new TD Ameritrade, where you'll find powerful trading tools like our exclusive market motion detector, a new way to see how fast the stock's price is changing and the volume of those trades. Use your noodle, ask questions, don't follow the crowd. Get commission-free internet equity trades for 45 days plus $500 cash. Call 877-TD-Ameritrade. Independence is the spirit that drives America's most successful investors. Call, click, or stop by today. Closed captioning hours on CNN, sponsored in part by Jennifer Convertibles. From Jennifer Convertibles, a Simmons microfiber sofa bed, just $2.99. Only at Jennifer, $2.99. Jennifer Convertibles, the only place to buy a sofa bed. George Allen Smith and Jennifer Hagel seem to own the future. George just had a, I guess you would say, a charisma or a, a personality, a quality about him that, you know, that stuck out. Jen Hagel was the type of, uh, was the type of girl that everyone loved. They had everything, looks, love, and a long life together ahead of them. He was adorable, tall, and very good looking, and friendly. And she was looking forward to, you know, a happy life, uh, being married to George. Tonight we speak not only to the family of George Smith, his mother, father, and sister Bree, but also to the missing bride camp. Remember, she was mysteriously out of her cabin the morning her husband went missing. Uh, let's catch up to date with investigative reporter Pat Lalama. Where does it stand right now, Pat? Okay, Nancy, here's the first thing. Uh, the authorities have made it clear this is not, this case is not getting cold. They are very vigorously investigating. Nothing really new to tell us at this point, but they are on the case. Uh, number two, uh, one of the very interesting things that I think is happening is that the families are looking into charging or at least making allegations to the cruise line that they created the party atmosphere, that they did not uh, vigorously and responsibly watch the activities of the patrons on the ship and that could have contributed to what happened to George. Um, another thing that's happening, of course, is that Jennifer is using the power of her experience as a teacher. She's written some safety tips that she's putting on a website now to help other people who have been victimized uh, by these kinds of things that have happened on cruise ships. And of course, we've got congressional hearings still coming up on the history and the patterns to find out what we can do to make these things not happen again. Well, Jennifer Hagel Smith, uh, went silent and really can you blame her at the disappearance of her husband but she did manage to speak to Oprah take a listen I heard that he um, called your names 
and that you kicked him in the groin and he was doubled over and that you two had a very nasty fight on the, and then on the I, last and time then you were seen together. And then I stormed off. Yes. And Are you saying that's not true? I'm not saying one way or the other, but I guess the only thing I would like to say is that if that is the last encounter that I had with, with my husband, if, if that is it, then that is something that, that I will have to carry mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Um, I can't, I can't remember anything from mm -hmm. a certain time period. We just aren't angry people. George would never call me names. I do not remember the last, you know, words or time we saw each other. I remember very vaguely leaving the casino area to go to this revolving bar or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was around George and then I remember nothing. That is the missing bride in this scenario, speaking to Gail King, uh, filling in for Oprah. With us tonight, a special guest, first time on the show, Mike Paul. This is Jennifer Hagelsmith's spokesperson, along with James Walker, Hagelsmith's lawyer. To Mike Paul, why won't Jennifer Hagel answer the direct questions put to her, such as, did you kick your husband in the groin? What did you argue about? Why won't she answer the questions? Why does she play dodgeball? She's not playing dodgeball, Nancy. First of all, it's, not, it's good to see you again. I, <laughs> we, we, we spent a lot of time together on Court TV, and I'm glad to be on your show. But Well, wait till the end of the segment before you say that. <laughs> so why won't fine. she answer the question? Well, you can't answer a question off something that you don't remember. She's not playing okay. dodgeball. Got it. All right, so she doesn't remember. When did her memory laps. What's the last thing she remembers? As she just said, the last thing that she remembered was being in uh, that bar area with her husband. Being in the bar. Okay. Last thing she remembers being in the bar. So she doesn't remember an argument, a kick in the groin, and, and charging off. All right. You know what? She doesn't have to because the witnesses apparently do remember it. My question now, uh, Mike Paul, is where did she spend the night? She was in the hallway of the floor in which she resided on the cab, in, in uh, the floor in which her cabin uh, was. Mike, you're, you're, you're talking like a lawyer. She was in the hallway on the floor in which she resided. You mean, she, was she outside the cabin, the stateroom? Nancy, can, I, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. This is a woman who has said that there are portions of the evening that she doesn't remember. Right. One of the reasons why, and I thank you for saying that, that you started off by saying she, can you, can you blame her for being quiet during a certain period of time? For right. six months, for more than six months, she was quiet. She did what the FBI told her to do. She got beat up in the media. She had a character attacked. Now we're at the point now where this is not about Jennifer Hagel Smith. This is about the death of her husband. This is about foul play. This is about an alleged murder on a ship. And uh -huh. for us to go back to falsities, for example, you just talked about something that was been in a newspaper by one individual that said something. There were no facts to back that up. And we're beyond that now. One of the okay, reasons why... Okay, you know what? I, I let you go on, Mike, but go you know, ahead. we've only got 20 minutes left, and I think you may preach to me the whole... Just If you could just answer the question, was she sleeping outside the stateroom in the hall? Yes, no. She was outside the stateroom in the hall, and she was asleep. Yeah, she doesn't remember, as I said. Okay, what you happened. know what? Uh, you know what? Elizabeth was speaking to me in my ear just then. Did you say yes, she was outside the stateroom in the hall? Yes. Okay. What's amazing to me, having been on one cruise many, many years ago, there are literally hundreds, legions of cruise ship employees that patrol all the time. And I find it very difficult to believe that they did not see a woman comatose lying in the hall, that nobody called and went, oh my God, quick, call 911. This woman is sick. She needs help. Uh, that's a great point. And that goes to the security on that ship. I think that's an excellent question. One of the things that we know, for example, and Jim Walker, who's here, will, will tell you more details about that. But we know that there were very, very few security officials that were on that ship. Okay, that's hold a on. Major Let's problem. go to him. That's a good point. James Walker, nobody saw her, not a security person, not a staff person, not another passenger on the boat. And she was out laying in the hall, not by the pool, not on deck chair, not in another room, but laying out in the hall, right? 
Well, what we've learned from Royal Caribbean, and Royal Caribbean has gone on record to say that there's a surveillance tape that shows her coming down to deck nine, coming out of the elevator, and instead of going left uh, towards the, the uh, front of the ship, she goes right, and she, according to Royal Caribbean, was found in a little alcove, not in the main hallway. She was found unconscious uh, by some, not security guards, but by a cleaner very okay. early in the morning okay. after being unconscious for about an hour, hour and a half. Okay, an hour and a half? Uh, that's so what, what that's time does that place her there? It if she was found early in the morning and she had only been there an hour and a half, then where was she when George Smith had a fight in his stateroom? According to Royal Caribbean, she was found at 4.30 in the morning uh -huh. on the opposite side of the ship, uh -huh. on the starboard side of the ship, on the, on the port side of the ship, uh, on the other side uh, of the ship from her, from her cabin where George was. So she was, she was literally uh, five or six hundred feet away from the cabin when she was found unconscious at the same time that there was noise complaints being made uh, to the cruise line. At so the she very was same time. At the, literally at the same time based upon the information okay, that the cruise line is informing straight. us. Okay, let me get something James, you're saying she was found at the same time neighbors reported hearing a scuffle in the cruise in the stateroom uh well there's there's a passengers on the left side of the of george's cabin pat and greg lawler who actually made a complaint to security was right it about at the that same time? time okay that's all i was asking right uh, next question it's my understanding that jennifer hagel smith says that her husband spent the night before that not that night but the night before in someone else's room that, that's a total uh, again, a total that's... falsehood and lim i'd like to address that please do because we've because been asking because that couple says that's not true well it's it's a simple matter for there's no couple that's ever come out and ever said that George Smith was sleeping in another cabin. You see, we've been trying to obtain the names of all the passengers so we could interview them uh, by ourselves and find out the truth. What we heard back in July when the cruise line was trying to suggest this was an, an accident, the cruise line was releasing this type of false information. Okay. Uh, that's not but true. Wait, it's you've never gone been true. Far, far, far beyond answering the question, and I, I hate to rush you, but I've got so many questions for you. Mike Paul uh, yes. with us is Jennifer Hagel Smith spokesperson. Why does Jennifer Hagel Smith need a PR person? I'm a, I'm a crime victim. I didn't need a PR person. Why does she need a PR person? That's a great question, Nancy. To answer some of the questions that you've been asking. And well, why can't I, and she I, and answer? I respect, you. I respect you for, for asking them because there's a lot of erroneous information. Quite frankly, there's a lot of erroneous information that's been out there for over seven months now. Okay, got another question and for we you. And thank you for the opportunity to clear up the lies, quite frankly. Hey, Mike, is it, did, did Jennifer Hagel Smith take a, an FBI polygraph? Did she take an FBI polygraph? Correct. I have no knowledge of that. Mike Paul, okay, let me try James Walker. This is Hagel Smith's lawyer. Has your client taken an FBI polygraph? Yes, she took a, a polygraph administered by a top FBI polygraph expert that flew up from Washington very, very early. Okay, um, wait, 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 she, wait, 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 before I run out of time, did she hire the person who administered the polygraph. Oh, no, of course not. You have to understand, I'm a maritime attorney. Jennifer's never had a criminal defense attorney. The FBI arranged for that as a, as a way of excluding her from any involvement. She passed. There was absolutely no deception. She's the only one who took a polygraph test. Uh, we'd like people at the cruise line and, and some of the men in that cabin to take a polygraph test. So she has been found fully vindicated. She's not a suspect. She's been completely cleared. Joining us right now, George Smith's family, his mother, his father, and his sister, who bravely have not given up. Straight to Bree Smith, this is George Smith's sister. Bree, what do you make of what you just heard? Um, well, I don't want to comment too much on, mm -hmm. on the story, but what I do know was that um, Jennifer Hagel Smith was found at 4.30 in the hallway, um, further down the hallway from my brother's cabin, and um, from what I understand, Royal Caribbean crew members, three crew members from, from their own statements, uh, went back down the hallway to see if my brother was there, and he was not in the room. They entered the room, um, you know, they obviously must have turned on the light 
to look for my brother, um, did not notice the blood in the cabin, ignored the fact that there had been complaints on both sides of my brother's cabin, um, and then got Jennifer and returned her to the cabin in a wheelchair with no concern about where my brother was. Really, um, they should have realized that a crime had been committed in that room at 4.45 or 4.30 in the morning, not 8.30 in the morning when they saw the blood on the overhang. Also with us, George and Maureen Smith. This is George Smith's parents to Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, it's a, a real pleasure to have you and your husband and your daughter. How do you keep going every day? There are crime victims all across the country listening to you right now. How do you keep going missing George, your son? We believe that the FBI will solve this case, Nancy. Um, it's a very, very active case, and that was reconfirmed to me. And that's how we keep going, because we have to get justice for George. And we're filing a lawsuit against Royal Caribbean, and that's how we'll get answers as well. And uh, once we start finding out, we have to find out what happened to George, and it will not go unsolved to George's father, also named George, George Smith. When I look at these photos of George Smith, you know, he's all American, cr scrubbed in sunshine, his whole world ahead of him. How do you keep going? Sometimes it's very hard, Nancy. Um, we keep going because we're searching for justice for George. Um, every day we hope there's breaking news that uh, FBI has solved this crime and uh, we can get justice and go on. Basically, that's what we're really looking for, the FBI to solve it. What do you make of the investigation so far, Mr. Smith? Um, I think it's very active. Uh, basically, uh, we know that um, security uh, came to George's room at 4.30, and then um, we know that uh, Jennifer was brought back at 4.45. Ten minutes before Jen was brought back, two Royal Caribbean employees went into George's cabin looking for George. And uh, we think that when they went into George's room, they saw the crime scene, and they would have realized that something had gone down. Help point, putting things right the moment they go wrong. Farmers, get you back where you belong. da 70 a 700 metri 800 mm di pura pioggia 263 giorni di sole In Italy's Dolomite Alps perfect conditions translate into the world's finest Pinot Grigio Welcome to Cavet, America's number one Pinot Grigio and Pinot Noir The Cavet Collection, make it interesting Presenting Blue from American Express. The card with no annual fee and an introductory rate of 0% for up to 15 months with a low APR after. Call 1-800-600-BLUE or visit us online to get yours. You can pay over time, which makes this card remarkably flexible. It has a free rewards program with so many choices, it'll make your head spin. Plus, it has a fraud detection system which gives you extra security when you shop. All this with an introductory rate of 0% for up to 15 months and a low APR after. Call 
1-800-600-BLUE or visit us online to apply. Blue from American Express. Discoverboating.com. He started touching me. For skin.